Morning, everybody. What's today's topic? Well, we're going to talk about problems with welds. Um, I had somebody write me and say, hey, look, if I send you a picture, can you tell me what you think I'm doing wrong, you know, when I'm welding? And that's, yeah, sure. But that's kind of a hard thing to do. So he goes, well, I don't have an exact picture. I got one off of the web. I'll send it to you. And I have the same problem and my welds look the same. So let me send you a picture and see what you think. And I said, sure, go ahead and let me think about it a bit before I do, you know, any kind of a video or, you know, give you an answer. So anyway, he did. So we're going to go over this. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas or at least suggestions on what I think you're doing wrong or what other people may be doing wrong because I have the same problems myself. So it's not just you that has problems, you know, when you weld and you look at them and you say, wow, uh, yeah, it holds it together. It looks like crap, but I'll just use a grinder on it and clean it up or, you know, or a flap disc or something like that. But let's take a look and discuss why you're having problems with the wells. Let me throw up a picture and we'll go from there. Like always, no long intros. Let's get right after it. Here we go. Okay, so these are the photos he sent me. He got them off of the web, but he said it's, it looks very similar to what he's running into. Now, my first reaction, and I'm not a professional welder, but my first reaction is you're going too fast. You're not getting in the upper picture. You're not getting enough weld laying down. And what it's doing is it's getting cold. And then you've got this really weird looking bead. Now, yeah, it might hold. And yeah, you might be able to grind it down, like I said, and paint it or whatever you're going to do. And it'll look fine, but it's not an optimal weld. I mean, take a look at your welds. Your welds are very inconsistent. I mean, very inconsistent. So you want your weld to be consistent. So that tells me um, from the photo, I mean, that you're just, you're rushing it. You're going too quick. Um, I don't know what kind of a welder you have. I mean, the other thought is slow down your wire speed some. Maybe that'll help you. Um, again, you know, get some, get some steel and practice and then adjust your wire speed. I mean, if you look at your welds and they're starting to look inconsistent again, um, I'm not saying it's an easy fix, but it's something that you can do. Just slow your wire speed down and then try it again. And then take a look at the one above that you thought was inconsistent. Look at the one below and say, hey, look, it's turning out much better. So then you know that you can adjust your wire speed. That's what I meant. Um, so practice. So you got the first weld, like let's say you do it on top and it's inconsistent. It's all over the place. Do the second weld. Step one, slow down. Step two, be consistent in your speed. Step three, if you don't like what you're seeing, adjust that wire feed. Okay, and I think that on that second test run or that second bead that you do, it's going to look a hell of a lot better. I mean, and so try that and then we'll discuss it more. I mean, maybe you can send me another picture and we can throw it up for discussion. Um, there's another thought and I do it. I mean, I'm right handed and so the torch is in my right hand, but I use my left hand um, like under it or holding it, I mean, kind of like to help me balance what I'm doing and it helps me stay consistent. I mean, so that's another thought that you might try, you know, use that in your second test run or your third and just keep practicing those beads, but use your left hand. It, it's kind of, it's hard to explain. I just put it under my right hand sometimes. Sometimes my left hand's holding, you know, around the wrist area, you know, I mean, it just depends on what I'm doing. But my left hand tends to add that balance that I need to keep my welds consistent. So, I mean, um, it's a lot of this is technique and a lot of it's trial and error. But if you're just practicing on scrap metal, you're going to figure out, I mean, what works for you. Uh, it's kind of what I do, really. So your, your question is asking me how close should you be to the metal when you start MIG welding. Um, I'm fairly close, okay? I mean, you don't want to be a long ways away. Otherwise, the shielded gas isn't going to do you any good. And I don't use flux cord. So I have the Millermatic. I use gas. I stay fairly close to the metal. Um, you're going to get an idea after you practice four, five, six welds. I mean, you, you, you don't want to be very far away. You're going to have splatter. You're going to have all kinds of issues. And, you know, so you'll get it to where it's fairly close and that shielding gas is helping you. So I think that answered your question. So this is just meant to be kind of a quick tip review. I mean, you know, you sent me the picture. I'm giving my thoughts. I'm not a professional welder. Somebody else can drop in the comments below. I mean, if they have some other ideas or, you know, other techniques that they use. Okay, I'm just telling you what I do, you know, after practicing and practicing and practicing. And hopefully some of these tips are going to shorten your learning curve. Okay, so where it'll be quicker for you. So I use shielded gas. And what else do I do is what you're asking me. I keep my uh, torch tip fairly close to the metal. 
you know, I got my little C pattern in my mind going on. Okay. And I use my left hand as it's, I don't want to say a bridge. It's more for balancing. Okay. I don't slow my speed. I mean, I go at a certain consistent speed. If I don't like the way that things are, I can reach over and I can touch my wire speed control. Or I know in my mind, hey, look, you're going too fast. So then turn around, slow it down, okay? And the more that you do this, the better you're going to get at it. Your penetration, you know, in your mind is going to be totally fine. It depends on if you're doing something structural or you're just playing around with artistic stuff. You can go, well, I don't care because it's just artistic stuff. So I'm not so worried about the penetration. Yeah, that's fine. I understand. But the idea here is to give you enough tips and information to make you consistent, good welding welder. <laughs> I guess that's another way to put it. Um, I'm the home handyman. I'm sorry I'm not posting videos like I used to right now because work has been keeping me so busy that it's horrendous amounts of overtime and I will do what I can as you folks send me your questions. So that's it for this video. I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you click subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Okay, so let's recap everything for a minute. Um, say you have some metal. What are you going to do? Well, it's sometimes it's got some kind of a scale on it. It's mill scale. Sometimes it's got cosmoline. Cosmoline is an oil byproduct they put on steel to protect it from rusting during shipment and sales and stuff like that. So I get it out in the garage. I know that that's the case. I usually wipe down those areas or the whole thing with acetone and I get it real clean because I'm going to paint it anyway or I'm going to do some kind of a finish on it. So I clean the steel. I, wherever those welds are going to be, I might use a flap disc, a grinding wheel, and I might touch it right around there and clean it up and make it nice and shiny. It's called weld prepping, I guess. Now, that's one thing you definitely want to do. Okay, then the second thing is, you know, you want to make sure you have the correct MIG wire. Um, 023, 025 is going to be fine for almost everything you do around your shop. There's nothing wrong with 030, but I mean, look, it's mainly for like one quarter inch steel welding and things like that. So yes, I do have some, uh, but this is what I use and this is the way I use the wire. Okay, now I'm ready to weld. And like I said, I will use that left hand. I'll support my other one and I get comfortable. The big thing is get comfortable before you begin your welding. Okay, so now you're ready to weld slow your rate down okay don't go fast it'll turn out like one of these two pictures you're going way too fast and if i flip this over depending on the thickness of the steel you may not have good penetration it might look okay but you don't have good penetration if it's something that needs to be structurally sound you're failing okay so you don't want to do that so you want to slow down your speed stay consistent like i keep telling you practice your little c's your little circles and just keep practicing welds on scrap steel and slow that speed down. Now, if you still feel that you're going too fast, you can always reach over and touch that wire feed like I told you and slow it down. So you can play around with this. These are the very basic things that you can do. And you're going to get, pretty soon, you're going to get better and better welds. Take a look at the first one you did. And then after you practice for a couple of hours doing the suggestions that I'm saying, and using that left hand to kind of balance and or bridge or whatever, you know, and support that welding, these welds are going to turn out to be better, 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 better. And pretty soon you're going to go, wow, I'm getting really good at doing this. Okay. So those are your tips. Those are the things that I would do. And just make sure that you keep your gun close to the metal. It's not on top of the metal, of course, you'll ruin the tips. But, you know, I always have extra tips too, because I make mistakes like everybody else and I screw them up. And the tips aren't that expensive, but you want to be close, especially if you're using shielding gas. Um, I don't use that flux cord unless you're out in the wind or something like that. And that's rare that I do that. So most all my welding is done with shielded gas. I stay fairly close to the steel. And then your welds are going to come out more consistent. They're going to come out with good penetration. And you're going to be impressed of the progress that you made just from these simple tips. I'm sure other people have uh, other ways of doing things or suggestions. They can leave them in the comments below. All right, I'm going to see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. You folks have a good day. Bye-bye.